All right, kiddos. So still studying triangles, but today we're going to talk about bisectors, medians, and altitudes. So first one we're going to look at is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, please remember it has to be perpendicular, and since it's a bisector, that means it has to go through the midpoint. It is extremely important that you know that it is perpendicular. Ooh, what just happened? It is perpendicular at the midpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out, basically I'm going to guess, where the midpoint is. So if I say the midpoint is, I'm going to do this in red, uh, the midpoint is about right there. So that means this piece is congruent to this piece. Make sure you mark it. Then if it's perpendicular, that means it has to make a right angle. So I'm going to go to my midpoint, and I'm going to just draw a line so that it is perpendicular at the midpoint. It doesn't always go through the vertex, so it doesn't always go through this point or any other for that matter. Just make sure it's perpendicular at the midpoint. The next one, angle bisector. You guys all know angle bisectors, so if I were to take the angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here to the angle and I'm going to divide the angle into two congruent angles. We'll just say that is about right since I'm not actually measuring it. So that means this angle is congruent to this angle. Angle bisector cuts an angle in half. All right, the next one, this is an altitude. An altitude is perpendicular from the vertex. So what you're going to do is you go to the vertex and you just drop a line straight down. It doesn't go through the middle. It doesn't do anything special. It just starts at the vertex and goes straight down, but it has to be perpendicular. So if it's not perpendicular, then it's not an altitude and it has to come from the vertex. A median, you find the midpoint just like we did up here. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to eyeball the midpoint again about right there. So that piece is congruent to that piece. Then you go to the corner and you draw a line to the midpoint. So that would be a median. So you got perpendicular bisector, perpendicular right angle at the middle. Angle bisector just cuts the angles in half. Altitude, right angle from the vertex. And then you've got your median, which connects the corner to the midpoint. All right, so now let's see what happens when we solve problems. So sometimes you're going to have to be able to identify them based on the marks. So for example, this one is at the vertex and it's perpendicular. So since it's perpendicular, it could be a bisector, except the word bisector, there's nothing congruent. So that means it has to be an altitude. So I'm going to go C and I'm going to write altitude underneath. Okay, the next one, since this piece is congruent to this piece, that means that is a midpoint. Since this is my vertex, what connects the vertex to the midpoint? That would be your median. So median. Okay, now since this piece is congruent to this piece, this is a midpoint. What is it when you are a right angle at the midpoint? That makes you a perpendicular bisector because you're perpendicular at the midpoint. So I'm going to make sure that I write perpendicular bisector. Okay, and then this one, two angles are congruent. Well, that's got to be an angle bisector. So sometimes you're going to have to identify them based on the way the picture looks. All right, next. The scarecrow got moved. All right. Here we have triangle PQR. They're telling me that QS is a median. Well, if this is a median, that means it connects the midpoint. So that means this piece is congruent to this piece. They tell me that PS is 4X minus 2 and SR is 2X plus 4. They want me to find SR. Okay, so SR is 2X plus 4. So that means I need to find X so that I can plug it in. Well, I know these two are congruent because it's a median. 
So 4x minus 2 is equal to 2x plus 4. So if I subtract 2x from both sides, I get 2x minus 2 equals 4. Then I'm going to add 2. So I get 2x equals 6. Then I'm going to divide by 2. So I get that x is 3. So now that means 2 times 3 plus 4. 6 plus 4 it is 10. So SR is 10. Okay. Now AC is an altitude, not attitude, altitude. Now remember the altitude, it goes from the vertex and it's just perpendicular, nothing else. So if this is 50 degrees, they want me to find this angle over here. Well, isn't this an exterior angle? And to get the exterior angle, don't you add the remote interior angles? So I would say that angle 1 is equal to 90 plus 50. So angle 1 is 140 degrees. You could have also, if you prefer, you could have said, well, if this is 90 and this is 50, 90 plus 50 is 140, and then took 180, because you know there's 180 degrees inside the triangle, and subtracted 140, you would have gotten 40. So this angle here is 40. These two are a linear pair. So this is just another way to get the answer. So you know they have to add up to 180. So if this one is 40, that means this one is 140, which is what we found doing this. So two different ways to get the same answer. All right. Now we have an angle bisector. You've seen this question on a quiz, and a lot of you missed it. If it's an angle bisector, it means it's cutting an angle in half. This is... This is not an angle down here. This is a segment that has a linear pair, but this is the actual angle that's being bisected. So that means this piece is congruent to this piece. Since these two are a linear pair, that means 180 minus 65, so that makes 115. So that means this angle is 115. Well, I know that this angle here plus this angle here equals this exterior angle. Well, if my exterior angle is 65, then 35 plus what gives me 65? So that would be 30. So that makes this angle 30. Well, if that one's 30, guess what? So is that one, because it was an angle bisector that made them equal. So now to get this angle here, if you add these two together, 65 plus 30, you get 95. Well, if all three angles have to add up to 180, then you subtract the 95, and you get 85. So angle F is 85 degrees. All right. Number 8. LM is a perpendicular bisector. So to be a perpendicular bisector, remember, it has to be a right angle at the middle. So that means this is the middle, and this is 90 degrees, and this piece equals this piece. If this is 90 degrees, isn't this piece over here also 90 degrees? So they tell me that LN is 12Y minus 7. LP is 13 plus 11Y. Well, since this is the midpoint, we said those two were equal, so I'm going to set them equal. So 12y minus 7 is equal to 13 plus 11y. So solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 11y from both sides. So I get y minus 7 equals 13. That one canceled out. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So y is 20. So I know y is 20. Now they tell me that the measure of angle NLM, NLM, so that's this angle right here, they're telling me that it is 5x minus 5. 
Well, I know that 5x minus 5 is equal to 90 because that's perpendicular and that means it's 90 degrees. So if I add 5 to both sides, I get that 5x is equal to 95. And then divide by 5, I get that x is 19. So now I know x is 19. All right. Now, this one says that triangle TRE has the vertices 3, 6, negative 3, 10, and negative 9, 4. So negative 3, 6, so that's T. Make sure you label your vertices. Negative 3, 10, negative 3, 10, and a negative 9, 4. Negative 9, 4, and that's E. So now what I need to do is connect my three points. Okay, so I have my triangle here. And now they say, find the coordinates of point M if PM is a median. Now remember, the median connects to the midpoint. So I need to connect to the midpoint. At the midpoint of which, I have three different lines. Well, if I have to start at T, then that means I have to find the midpoint of RE. So I'm just going to make myself a note here. Find the midpoint of ER. Okay, so I'm going to look at points E and R and find the midpoint. Remember to find the midpoint, add the X's. So negative 3 plus negative 9, then divide by 2. So negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Then do the same thing to the y values. Add your y values and divide by 2. Because remember, your midpoint is just the average. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. So that means 6, 7 right here would be my midpoint. Therefore, I would be able to draw the median. So my answer is parentheses, negative 6, 7. And that is how you find the midpoint so that you can draw the median. And since that's the midpoint, I know these two pieces are congruent. All right, see y'all next time.